Okay, so um, I'm demoing the uh, segment routing IPv6 from a mobile user plane demo. Um, I'm Kentaro Isao from Toyota. So what is SRV6? Um, SRV6 is basically source routing plus some more features based on IPv6, and which who attended yesterday's advanced course should be already familiar. But SRV6 is discussed as uh, one of the candidate protocol for next generation 5G mobile user plane protocol in 3GPP, and which is expected to make it easier to add flexibility and features like edge computing to the next generation mobile than using GTP, which is the current protocol. But obviously, um, we have deployed, already deployed GTP widely. It will not disappear in the next 10, 20 years, so coexistence and translation method is very important and discussed in ITF. So, to drive the standardization and deployment, we have conducted POC together with SoftBank and Aprecia Systems. And obviously, it's new protocol before standardization, so no one supported that. So we implemented that on Tofina ASIC using P4. And that's part of the demo. And at the IETF uh, last meeting, um, at the hackathon, from the lessons learned at the POC, we have implemented a new version of SRB6 mobile user plane function and to suggest updating internet draft at ITF working group. And actually, it only took like one hour coding two new SRB6 function using P4 and took like four hours for documenting it. So it was very successful and we have open source the code, uploaded it to GitHub, and at the demo, I would show, you could see the actual packet translated from GTP SRV6 and SRV6 to GTP, and source code, and anything you want to see for that, that POC. Thank so, you. looking forward to talk more at the demo booth. Thank you. Thank you. One to, two, one to two minutes, please. <laughs> okay, hi. Uh, my name is Mario Baldi. Uh, I'm going to demo the pipe, uh, which is a development environment to enable to incrementally add before code to an existing program. So the idea is uh, you have... Uh, uh, you have a switching device based on a programmable switch that comes with uh, existing code and uh, you can add to it and then write your own application to control that code, that, that new piece of code through the operating system, the network operating system that's running on the device. The network operating system controls the pre-existing functionalities. So the idea is you can add your functionalities leveraging the pre-existing ones um, so that you don't have to re-implement those and you can use them uh, for, your, for your additional feature. And the, the development environment basically hides the, the pre-existing program, which is good because that's hiding complexity and uh, it's also hiding proprietary features that might be in there, uh, showing only information that's that might be needed by the incremental developer. And at the same time, it limits what the incremental developer can write, the P4 code they can write, so that it can ensure the integrity of the pre-existing program. So the environment is constraining, supporting, and streamlining the, the incremental programming operation. So I, in the demo, I will show you the, the environment and uh, an, example, um, an example use case. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Ryan Denges here from Cornell. Uh, I'm a PhD student there. So my demo is about gossip protocols. Uh, these are widely used for database replication, failure detection, all kinds of things. And the idea is that each host in the protocol will occasionally randomly contact a peer and exchange some information. And this makes it really robust because it's randomized. Like you, you don't depend on some kind of tree structure that, that always has to be maintained. You just dial a random number and see if they heard about something. Uh, 
And what we're doing is we are trying to improve the performance and uh, characteristics of gossip protocols by moving some functionality into the switch and making switches aware of the protocol. So up here, I actually have a little example of one of our tricks, which is uh, we have a database replication protocol, which is what the demo is. You can come see it run uh, in the demo room later. Uh, and the way it works is you gossip the version of the database that you have. So up here, these hosts are sending have messages, um, and they're all traversing S1. So S1 knows who has these versions. And H3 is going to ask for updates. But H3 personally has only seen the have three message, so it's going to send a request for that. But the switch can upgrade it. So the switch can intervene and save you some time, save you some trouble. Uh, and there's a few other tricks that we have for you know, uh, improving this. And it doesn't take too much state on the switch. So uh, come check it out in the demo room later. Uh, and if you don't see it, you can always ask a random peer if they saw it, and maybe they'll tell you. That's all. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, hello. I'm uh, Mati Kedos from Menos Technology. And um, what we would like to show you is uh, we all here think that programmability is cool and P4 is cool. I want to uh, show you uh, um, to make it uh, accessible. Accessible and available. And so what are, are the ingredients for that? So first we need uh, uh, a use case, a function, uh, that you want to, uh, to express using the programmability. So for that, we, uh, uh, we choose a paper by Ruven Cohen from the Technion, uh, Sampling on Demand. Uh, this is the algorithm we are trying to implement. Um, and we need the ecosystem. So uh, we took a Mellanox switch running uh, NOS that call Onyx. On top of that, uh, we can run Docker container, which is totally add-on to the NOS. So you get all the legacy functionality. All the BGP and rest are there. And you just can add your functionality into it uh, using the, a programmable switch, but an hybrid programmable switch in which you can just add your uh, new functionality and not replacing all the legacy ones. So you have the legacy and your new one on the same time, on the switch, and up you go. And the nice part about that, that you don't need to be expert to do it. Uh, I can say that this algorithm was implemented by two, two, two students which were new to before, new to the ecosystem and to the switch, with a few weeks only. So you invited to uh, the demo to see that demo and a few other use cases as well. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Theo Jepsen from Uzi uh, USI in Switzerland. Did you know that 80% of business data is stored as unstructured data, like text, JSON, or not JSON, but images? And most of the, or very common task for computers is to search through this text. And it can't be done using things like SQL. And now with disaggregated uh, networks, the data is not stored where the compute is performed anymore. So when we have, want to do search, we have to transfer the data across the network to compute nodes. But why don't we just search the data in the network? We've got these new programmable switches that have a lot of I.O. and are connected to all the, the, these storage nodes. So with, with that observation, we came up with PISA-based parallel search. What we do is we search data flowing through the network on a programmable switch. In our demo, we're, uh, we've got a Tofino switch hooked up to a server, and we're searching through data stored on the server. And, the, and one, one of the data is a log file, or we also have a, a WikiLeaks uh, dump of emails from the elections a few years ago. So that's interesting stuff to look through at line rate on one of these switches. So Thank you. Okay. So hello everyone, uh, I will be uh, brief because there is already a coffee break outside. My name is Pavel Benáček, I'm from Cessnet, and today we are presenting a demo together with Netcope Technologies, and the demo is about the utilization of uh, external memories for building of large batch action tables inside the FPGA. Uh, our solution is uh, 
let's say, platform independent. So far, we've tested it on uh, Xilinx and Intel FPGAs. We are also providing the generator for the generation of the memory subsystem based on the provided P4 source code. And well, if you want to know more about it, uh, feel free to stop uh, by our desk and we will tell you more and enjoy the coffee break. Thank you. Thank you.